Heck no, I won't explain. Not again, not again. Heck no, I'm so po, I'm so po, I eat no more. Please feed me those delicious subs. Welcome to Art Explained, the show where I explain art. My name is Michelle, and there are many reasons to mourn every day, whether that be for our country, for Uncle Pepe, or in this case, for the destruction of a prominent studio in Beijing, formerly owned by Chinese artist Ai Weiwei. On August 3rd, the artist's largest studio was demolished by authorities. The building was a former car parts factory and it served as Weiwei's main studio since 2006, located in the Zuo Yo Art District. Last fall, the rental contract expired and developers plan on replacing the studio with malls and commercial buildings. In an interview with the art newspaper, Weiwei's assistant and facility manager, Ga Rang, said it simply was impossible to move out quickly given the amount of art and materials kept there. Because of this, there were works by Weiwei that were damaged in what the artist described as an unannounced attack. In an interview with NPR, Weiwei said, Compared to the memories which have been lost, compared to a society which has never established trust in the social order, a trust in the rule of law, or a trust in any kind of unity in defending the rights of its people, what has been lost at my studio is insignificant, and I don't even care. There are profoundly deeper and wider ruins in this deteriorating society where the human condition has never been respected. This particular raising is not suspected to be motivated by political retaliation, but instead a wave of gentrification and redevelopment in the neighborhood. In the past year, China has been evicting several galleries in Kaochengdi, a Beijing arts district developed by Weiwei. Since August 2017, Chinese artists have been struggling to find affordable studio and living spaces in art hubs due to the rise in new developments and forceful government evictions. With all this, Weiwei told NPR, this is not simply the demolition of a studio, but rather the demolition of human rights. You know, doing a wacky joke about the demolition of human rights is probably not the best idea. You know what's worse? Doing a dumb meta non-joke where you talk about a potential joke, when in actuality there is no joke. No what's even worse than that? Commenting on it as if it makes it better if you acknowledge it rather than just not having a joke. This reminds me of the last time Wei Wei had a studio demolished in 2011 when his Shanghai studio was raised before an 81-day detention for alleged tax evasion. This was followed by four years of de facto house arrest. He was released without ever being officially charged with a crime. If you're not super familiar with Wei Wei, I must say say that you've disappointed me once again gain. Wei Wei is a longtime critic of the Chinese government and has been described by Smithsonian Magazine as China's most dangerous man. As an artist, he's delved into sculpture, installation, photography, film, painting, and architecture. One of his most well-known works is the Bird's Nest Stadium that he designed for the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. Before the games, though, he disowned the event as a fake smile concealing China's problems. This was not the first time he spoke up for social issues in his home country, and it certainly would not be the last. Weiwei was born on August 28, 1957, with famed poet Ai Ching as his father, a man who is also often known for speaking out against the regime. In 1957, shortly after Weiwei was born, Qing was one of the first intellectuals to be politically dehabilitated and labeled an enemy of the people in the anti-rightist campaign. He and his family were sent to the hinterlands for labor and re-education. When the Cultural Revolution ended, Qing and his family returned to Beijing in 1976. Weiwei later enrolled in Beijing Film Academy in 1978, studying animation, before moving to the U.S. in 1981. He briefly attended the Parsons School of Design, but he dropped out. He then made a living out of drawing street portraits and working odd jobs like carpentry, house painting, and construction. In 1993, he returned to China after his father became ill. Soon after, Weiwei established the experimental artist Beijing East Village and built his first architectural project, a studio house in Kaochengdi. Weiwei's notoriety grew when he was invited in 2005 to start blogging by Sino Weibo, 
the largest internet platform in China. Until May 2009, when Weiwei's blog was shut down, he wrote more than 2,700 posts, often scathing social commentary and criticisms on government policies. Over 100,000 people visited the blog every day. Weiwei's contributions extend much further, though. One of Weiwei's most notable projects was in December 2008. This is when he led a team to survey and film the conditions of various disaster zones. In the Sichuan province after the 8.0 magnitude earthquake on May 12, 2008, he also led a citizen's investigation to compile the names and information of the student victims. This investigation accumulated nearly 5,400 names as of April 2009. When it comes to his artworks, one worth remembering is Sunflower Seeds, which opened at London's Tate Modern in October 2010. Sunflower Seeds was an installation of 100 million handmade and painted sunflower seeds made out of porcelain. It took two and a half years and 1,600 artisans to create the seeds. That's a lot of seeds! This sculpture can be interpreted in many different ways. It also symbolizes that together, the people of China can overthrow the Communist Party. Because the process to making each seed employs 30 laborious steps, it also challenges the Made in China mantra. Weiwei's prominence in the art world and as a social commentator in his home country is truly unparalleled. It is truly unfortunate that his studio in Beijing has been demolished, but when knocked down you make lemonade and then you drink it up. That's what we're going to do. Thank you for watching this latest episode of Art Explained. Have you ever lost something of value? Want Art Explained to find it for you? Send us a money order and we'll sniff out the case.